Apple made an iPad Pro in 2018. That was the last iPad Pro. Now they're back a year and a half later with an update. The iPad Pro came out in October 2018. I'm holding the 11 inch model here and I've used it. I think it's great. The one thing I've really missed on all the iPads is a trackpad. I've written about that for eight years now and I felt like a trackpad was a thing that I would use to edit and I would use to make my iPad feel more like a laptop. And even though iOS 13 introduced a lot of features that you know, made the iPad feel a little more laptop-like. It's not my everyday computer. And that's because the multitasking and the feel of it just don't match up for all the software programs that I need in my workflow. Yes, you could use an iPad for a lot of different things, but I wanted to meet my needs more. Well, the new iPad Pro that Apple just announced, which is not this, looks like this, but there are a couple of really key features. Yes, there's a new A12Z processor, which Apple is promising is more powerful. But the thing about the trackpad really excites me the most. There's a whole new keyboard accessory called the Magic Keyboard that has scissor keys, it has a trackpad, it even has this crazy floating display mechanism where the, it looks like a monitor floating up in the air and I feel like that would be really cool to work with it on a desk. But it better be because that Magic Keyboard is $300, which is a lot of money. $300 is what the basic iPad costs. It's what the, a lot of Chromebooks cost. It's a, what a lot of budget laptops cost. If you add that on to the starting $800 price for the base level 11 inch iPad Pro, which can ramp up a lot higher if you go for the 12.9 inch model, or if you pay for more storage, you're easily looking at anywhere from $1,100 to like $1,700 for your dream iPad setup. That's premium laptop territory. And so you gotta treat it like a premium laptop. Can it do everything you want? Is it more of a secondary device? Apple also announced a $999 or more, depending on what you pay for it, MacBook Air. That's kind of an everyday computer that you would use. Now, I love the iPad's versatility for apps, for drawing, for music. My family uses iPads all the time. I would love the iPad to evolve into the everyday computer. Maybe the trackpad support is one feature that could do it. The good news is that the trackpad support is not just on the iPad Pro. It's actually coming to a variety of iPad models. So you could just sit tight and wait, considering how financially unstable things are right now. I think that's a great idea. Uh, you can see what trackpads and keyboards you have lying around that will be compatible when iOS 13.4 uh, becomes available, or mice, I should say. Uh, and connect them to your iPad and see. Logitech's also making a $150 trackpad keyboard case for last year's iPad and iPad Air models, which seems like a better bet. So the other thing that the new iPad has is something that I've been following for a while, augmented reality upgrades. Uh, Apple's devices can already do AR, but there is a new second camera on the iPad Pro, and there's also a LiDAR sensor. LiDAR is a technology that we've seen in cars, and it's a type of tech that I, you know, I've heard about in AR headsets, and I've been following this stuff for a while. Basically, it allows you to 3D scan rooms and get a, a longer range uh, sense of depth. Uh, if, if you think about Magic Leap or Microsoft HoloLens or, or any of these types of AR headsets or doing something like that, Apple's putting that into an iPad. Now, it's not the first time that I've seen that type of tech before in a mobile device. In fact, there are companies like Occipital, which made a structure sensor for the iPad that had the ability to 3D scan rooms uh, a handful of years ago. Also, Google Tango did this on tablets and phones uh, with the ability to scan a room. Apple adopted some of those technologies for true depth um, for the shorter range camera uh, that, that Face ID uses where 3D scans your face. But the rear one can go up to five meters, can work outdoors and indoors, Apple promises it will be able to 3D mesh your environment, place all sorts of cool AR objects in there, but also use it for home design. You can use it for measurement. Uh, it, it's a very exciting technology, and it definitely seems like the underpinning for where Apple's going to go with an AR headset. So if you're following that, it's hugely important for Apple. Is it hugely important for you? Probably not because a lot of that AR tech is already out there um, and there are apps that are starting to learn how to do it even without 
something like a depth sensing, uh, you know, specific piece of technology. I don't think that's a killer feature, but I think it's an interesting feature. Now, how's the rest of it? We're gonna have to see when I actually get one to look at. I think right now it's perfectly okay to hang tight and not go for a really expensive product right now. Uh, so it's an odd time to launch a product like this. But it also is the dream iPad that meets all the features that I've been looking for for years. So I'm really excited about it possibly being the answer to everything that I've been looking for. And I'm also skeptical too. Those are my thoughts on the iPad Pro without having touched it and talking to you out of my home where I've been working for several weeks looking for dream work from home devices just like this.